unworthy Thor number five is on this week's short stack. I'm gonna tell you it's good in five minutes or less. Unworthy Thor five is the end of the Unworthy Thor's mini series. Thor has reached the ultimate Thor's hammer. He reaches his hand out, he touches it, and we get this great inner monologue where he's talking about, I I hear the thunder rumbling, the the hammer is crying out for my name. I feel it, and he goes, I am Thor, I am the god of thunder, I'm the thunder. We, we're treated to this great two-page spread of his history. And then he goes, I am the god of thunder, and this, and it cuts back to him, and he goes, this is not my hammer. It's the hammer of Thor, but he doesn't feel like it belongs to him. He doesn't feel like he needs this hammer, but he still wants to defend it. And when Proxima Midnight, the hooded figure, and Black Swan appear, he actually wields the thunder from the hammer to fight them off. It's a really great moment. And while all this is happening, the Collector is having a mental breakdown. Thori has released all of his creatures from his collection and they're fighting against the Collector. And all, none of his men are left. And Thor casually just kind of ca casts him off into the abyss. And Beta Ray Bill approaches Thor and he says, what are you doing? You know, you need the hammer. He goes, it's not my hammer. It doesn't belong to me. But Asgard does and they stole it. We're gonna steal it back. So he's still accessing some of the, the ultimate Thor's Mjolnir and he transports the old Asgard back to where it belongs. The fight's over, all is said and done, we're moving on, and we cut to Thanos and his group in his chamber, and he's talking about how he didn't really need the hammer, but he wanted it, but he doesn't really need it because he, he's he likes more powerful weapons. And the whole time, the cloaked figure is kind of bantering with him, and she's saying, you know, of course you don't need the hammer, we just wanted it. Proxima Midnight doesn't take kindly to this whole banter situation, and she goes after her. Of course, the cloak figure reveals herself to be Hela, which I don't think anyone thought was a surprise, and kills Proxima Midnight. Hela then tells Thanos that they should team up and she can give him whatever he wants most in life. And he goes, you know, what is that? And she says, death. And the two embrace. The issue closes out. Thor and Beta Ray Bill are talking about how, you know, the hammer might not be for them, but it was an adventure. It was a great adventure. And Beta Ray Bill stops and he asks Thor, he goes, you know, what what did Fury say to make you not worthy? And Thor says, all he said was, Gore was right. Jason Aaron's entire run revolves around the theme of gods and their worthiness. If you've been reading it since Thor 1 with Jason Aaron and Isad Ribic, then this all makes sense to you, and this is all awesome. If not, you might be a little bit lost, but I think that the miniseries does do a good job of kind of holding your hand through it. This is also a cool thing, because right now in Mighty Thor, Jane Foster is fighting the Shi'ar gods, who are very much not worthy of their power. They're egotistical, they're vain, they're killing billions of the people just for for lulls, pretty much. The last shot of the issue, though, is a wandering figure coming up to the ultimate Thor's Mjolnir, saying, I don't know why you're calling out to me, but you need a Thor, and I, and I think it's time the war Thor takes his place. So, we don't know who has the ultimate Thor's hammer, and I'm honestly, I'm at a loss to who it is. It could be Loki, could be Volstagg, the glove looks like Volstagg's glove. Or it could be another alternate universe Thor, because he even mentions how there's many Thors in the, in the universe. Do I think the Unworthy Thor miniseries should have been a separate thing? No. But am I happy for what we got? Yes. It's a lot of fun. It ties in thematically with everything Jason Aaron's been doing. It's been probably one of the strongest books Marvel's put out in the last five months. And Jason Aaron deserves a pat on the back. Olivier Coipel, Kim Jacinto, and on this issue, um, don't judge me. I don't remember everybody's names. I'm not perfect. Pascal Alex. Alexei. I don't know. All the artists do a great job. And the best thing about Jason Aaron's Thor is that each story feels big and feels important. I think that's something that's lost in a lot of Marvel books these days that feel a bit more episodic or, or serialized, which I know is bad because we're in serialized fiction. Don't judge me. But these books feel important. I feel like I need to read every issue. And that's a great thing to have in a book. It's separate from the main story, but you need to read it. You, but you hate that. I know. Okay. Well, I'm just pulling it out. Am I a bit of a hypocrite for liking the miniseries when I don't think it's needed? Yes. Do I own up to it? Yes. Do I still like it? You're right. Yes. Unworthy Thor 5 is a great addition to what has been a great story by Jason Aaron, who I think has one of the best Thor runs at least in the last 20 years. That's going to finish off another short stack this week. Be sure to comment in the comment section below. Tell me if you guys like the story, if you think it's a bit of a cop-out that he didn't get the hammer, 
Do you like what Nick Fury said? Do you like the fact that Gore was right? Do you hate it? Let me know in the comment section below. And always, please remember to like and subscribe for more Comic Thunder. Join me Thursday. We'll be wrapping up the Superman Reborn story on another short stack. And then, if all things go well, we'll have a cool video for you guys Friday too. So, that's it. I will see you guys on the next round. That's it. Fastest gun in the West.